بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهي لنا من أمرنا رشدا وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله وشكر لله we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى we ask him to send salutations and blessings and peace upon the best of creation, our Master Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said in Sahih Muslim, Inna Allah jamilun wa yuhibbul jamal. Verily, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. And that's the first thing that came to my mind, that came to my heart when I stepped into this blessed gathering, just beauty. And it's amazing that this hadith, Inna Allah jamilun wa yuhibbul jamal, the principle of love, which is central to our tradition, and it's really at the core of who our Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Habibullah, the beloved of Allah, which is higher than Khalilullah, the intimate friend of Allah. Habib is the highest. And the hadith says Allah loves beauty, and we know that our Prophet is the one Allah loved the most, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Jamal there prim prim primarily is our Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Verily Allah is beautiful and He loves Sayyidina Muhammad and all other beauty in the world because He is the most intense manifestation of beauty in this cosmos. Peace and blessings to be upon Him. And that one of our eminent and beloved senior scholars of our age, Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad, in his contentions, he says that every perception of beauty is a prayer upon the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is intimating alluding to one of the secrets of his blessed cosmic presence, peace and blessings be upon him. And one of the ways that we get to know our Prophet وسلم, is through his blessed heirs and inheritors, the Wuratha. And one of the great heirs of our Prophet وسلم, was a scholar who died in 298 after Hijrah. His name was Abu Uthman al-Hiyari. Abu Uthman al-Hiyari he died the same year that Imam Junaid died, but he was in Khurasan. And Imam Dahabi in his Sira Alam al Nubala, which it, it outlines biographies of the great masters of our tradition. In the entry of Sidi Abu Uthman al Hari, he says that he was for Khurasan what Junaid was for Baghdad. Like eminent, eminent master of this tradition. And Imam Dahabi says he was a Qudwa, he was an Imam, he was a Muhaddith, he gave his whole life for Hadith. He describes him as, he says, Al-Ustad. He describes him as Shaykh al-Islam. And Dhahabi is the student of Ibn Taymiyyah. And he's saying about Abu Uthman al-Hiyari, he was Shaykh al-Islam. And then he says, Abu Uthman, he gives his full name, al-Hiyari al-Sufi. Which, we're in a safe space, so I can say that. That Dhahabi called a Sufi Shaykh al-Islam, alhamdulillah. But that uh, Abu Uthman al-Hiyari, he was at the same time as Hakim, the great muhaddith, of Nisapur and Hakim said, our, our mashayikh are in agreement that Abu Uthman can mujab al-da'wa, that he was someone whose du'a du was answered. And he was once sitting with a companion, a fellow scholar, and he said, do you agree that عند ذكر الصالحين تنزل الرحمة? Do you agree with this ubiquitous maxim of our tradition that when the righteous are mentioned, mercy descends? He says, Bala, of course, this is well known. When the righteous are mentioned, mercy descends. And so Sidi Abu Uthman, rahimahullah, says, Fa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say the salihin. Allah's messenger is the master of all the righteous. So how much mercy descends at his blessed remembrance, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And mercy is again one of the salient realities of our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we know, the verse in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except for the sake of mercy to the cosmos or another tafsir as a mercy to the cosmos. And so he was sent out of mercy and he was sent as a mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said in the hadith that Hakim relates in his mustadrak, إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَحْمَةٌ مُهْدَى I am only a mercy that is gifted. I'm only a mercy that is gifted. So he is our gift. 
Allah's gift to us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is but pure mercy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Imam Sawi says, huwa aynur rahma. He is the very es essence of mercy. He is not a, simply a manifestation, but he is the very center, the core, the, the lub, the ayn, mercy itself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yunus gives, commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give us believers glad tidings when he says, Jalla thana'uhu wa bashiril ladhina amanu anna lahum qadama sidqin inda rabbihim give the glad tidings, this bushra, this gospel, right, that Sayyidina Isa al -Islam gave the gospel, the good news, and that's bi rasuni yati min ba'd ismuhu Ahmad, a messenger that will come after, his name is Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the great gospel of the cosmos, the great good news that Sheikh Yusuf al nabahani calls him al the paraclete that was, that's mentioned in the Bible, in the New Testament, which is the advocate, the shafir. That the Prophet in this, uh, this ayah, he's commanded to give the good tidings, give the, give the believers glad tidings of qadam asidqin, inda rabbihim. That in the presence of their Lord, they have qadam asidq. What is qadam asidq? Linguistically, qadam has to do with being ancient, like first, qadim, as well as surpassing. So it's primordial, it's a reality that is primordial and, and surpassing all other gifts. And it's predicated on sidq, which in the tafsir means mutahakik. It's a, an actualized, real, primordial treasure that's awaiting the believers. And it's a good news. It's a good news that's primordial, ancient, surpassing, and it's realized. It's actualized. Sid, it's true and guaranteed. Qatada, the great of the Imam of the Salaf, uh, Hassan al Basri, the great Imam of the Tabi'een, Zayd ibn Aslam, the Mawla of Umar ibn al Khattab, they all said the Qadam al Sidq there is Sayyidina Muhammad. He is this primordial, surpassing, guaranteed gospel for all believers because of his Shafa'a and his. Uh, Sahal ibn Abdullah on this verse said, specifically it's Rahmah. He said, the Qadam Sid hiya Rahmatun awda'ahullah ta'ala fi Muhammad. It is a mercy that Allah deposited in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the Holy Prophet on the Day of Judgment manifests this mercy in the moment that is his. Ana laha, ana laha. That all the Prophets are asked by humanity, intercede for us. Because judgment hasn't started yet. His most significant, the, the first uh, intercession that is the key to open all other inter intercessions is fi fasl al qada because the the waiting at the qiyamah is so difficult overbearing that the humanity lock stock and barrel go prophet to prophet to prophet and because of the decree of Allah despite their sublime rank they say nafsi nafsi they're not able to because it's not theirs when we come to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ana laha it's mine this is mine it's the maqam al mahmud that we pray for after each adhan and one of our teachers said, reflect in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, if you do a survey of all of his statements, he never asked for anything for his own person, except twice. The only time, he, everything he said was for us. The, the two times, the two things he asked for is his own blessed person is to send salawat, and the other one to ask Allah after the adhan to resurrect him, the wasila wal fadila wal daraja al rafiya wa ba'thadawm al maqam al mahmud, the praiseworthy station. And our teacher, he said that if you reflect on both of these personal requests, they're actually for us. Even the two times he asked something that for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked for him because of us. It wasn't for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's because of his mercy for us, his love for us. Why? Because the salawat is our way of gaining, of, of benefiting from that. Because Allah is already sending salutations on the Prophet. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. So all the angels are sending salawat. So when we do it, we benefit. Man alayhi ashra, ten for each one that we send. But also the maqam al mahmud, we ask Allah to give him this praise with these stations so he can intercede for us on the qiyamah. The irony of the prophetic majesty, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and so that he opens that and intercedes for everyone. And then he has multiple intercessions. He, the people who enter paradise without any hisab, Allah minhum. It's because of his shafa'a. The people who 
uh, enter a, a, a paradise uh, who, who are forgiven their sins because of his intercession. The people who would have gone to the fire temporarily, the believers because of sins, but Allah forgives them is because of his intercession. The, the believers that are temporarily punished in the fire, but then eventually taken out, it's because of his intercession. The believers in paradise who had taqsir in their, they had shortcoming in their worship, they're over, it's overlooked because of his intercession. The people in paradise raised in their darajats, because of his blessed intercession and many others, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Maqam Al Mahmud, this praiseworthy station, Yahmuduhu Al Awalun Wal Akhirun, it's Qadam Al Sidq, it's a primordial surpassing reality that's guaranteed. Wa Bashir Al Ladina, give this glad tidings. The Prophet's the one giving it, but he is it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so this principle of Rahmah manifesting, and also that all of his teachings are Rahmah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of the most important uh, teachings he emphasized is akhlaq, ethics. Because it all starts from ethics. The states of our hearts manifest on our speech, manifest on our actions. And so his, the central principle of khuluq, and this is something on a blessed night like this, we should all have a moment of introspection. We should all have a moment of looking inside ourselves and rec identifying at least one thing we can work on for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tonight should be a night of tawbah. What better way of celebrating our Prophet and our love for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, than to take, even if it's a tiny baby step, oh Allah, for your sake, I'm going to work on this one thing. Because khuluq is at the heart of the matter and it, and it resides in the heart. And our mother Aisha, when she was asked about the Prophet's character, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she says, Kana al Quran. What a powerful statement. His character was the Quran. The Quran, Ayatu Haqqin min al Rahmani Muhdathatun Qadimatun Sifatul Mausufi bil Qidami. Verses of truth, verses of Allah al Haqq, uh, uh, from the All Merciful, that are in time such that we can recite them, yet. Uncreated, it's the uncreated word of Allah. Why? Because they signify Allah's eternal attribute of speech, Sifatul Mausufi bil Qidami. This miracle of the Quran, Kana Khuluquhu, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al Quran. He is the mirror, as it were, of the speech of God. This is our, and our mother Aisha was a scholar of, this, of the companions, radiallahu anha, that this was her insight. And the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's amazing that even there's so many subtleties of the Qur'an that have to do with him. And if you read the, the first few chapters of the Shifa of Qadi Iyad, he goes through so many verses of the Qur'an that we wouldn't think refer to the Prophet Sallallahu that refer to him to the extent of the mystical letters, the secret letters of the Qur'an that we, we, our ulama did not say authoritatively with certainty what they indicate, but through intuition what they very well could indicate. And many of the tafsirs in the, in, in the Shifa of Qadi Iyad the mystical letters even, that his character was so Qur'anic, he was so Qur'anic that even the secret letters of the Qur'an allude to something of, of his reality, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why uh, Sahil ibn Abdullah said about Alif la Meem, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ He says Alif, Allah, Lam, Jibreel, Meem, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Imam Samarqandi, who Qadi Iyad cites, and Qadi Iyad is a scholar of the outward and the inward. He's a Maliki jurist, muhaddith, and so on his authority, we cite these early masters who delved into something of the isharat of these sublime letters, lest anyone get too excited that we're talking about what those letters could mean. That Qadi Iyad cites also a Samarqandi, and he says that, that uh, uh, Allah, Jibreel, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, kitab, because that's how the book comes. That's the book. From Allah to Jibreel alayhi salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Nazalahu ala qalbik. That Jibreel brings it on your heart, sallallahu alayhi salam. The Quran that were it sent to a mountain, it would rent asunder out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mountains cannot handle this. Sanulki alayka qawlan thaqila. It's a weighty word. But what handles it? What can bear it? Nazalahu ala qalbik. Jibreel brings it to your heart. This is the, 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 what greater tajalli than the speech of Allah, the book of Allah coming on the blessed heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that mountains would be rent asunder because of, he can bear it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابِ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ There's no doubt in this book. He also cites for Qaf وَالْقُرْآنِ الْمَجِيدِ 
Ibn Ata, one of the contemporaries of Imam Junaid, Qadiyyad cites him, what's Qaf? It's related to this, the, the weightiness of the Qur'an, because wal Qur'an al-Majid, by the majestic Qur'an, the powerful, sublime, awesome Qur'an, Majid. Qaf, he says, Ibn Ata says, it's quwwat qalb Habibihi Muhammad Sallallahu It's the intense power of the heart of Allah's beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's related, therefore, to Wal Quran al Majid, Qaf, Wal Quran al Majid. It's ajeeb. He says, uh, he cites one of the early Kalam scholars, Qadi Iyad, about Kaf, Haya Ain Saad. He's all references to the profound relationship between Allah and His Messenger. Wallahu alam. It's a possible meaning. Kaf, Kifaya. Allah is sufficient for the Prophet. Because He revealed, Alayhi Allahu bi Kaf in Abda. Is Allah not fully sufficient for His servant? And Allah takes ownership of the Prophet ﷺ. He's his servant, my servant. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi. Like Allah takes, this is the divine pride in Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ. This ascription, abdihi. Alayhi Allahu bi kafin abda. Is Allah not sufficient for his abd? That's the Prophet ﷺ primordially. Kifaya kaf, haya, ha, hidaya. Wa yahdika siratun mustaqima. And Allah will guide you to Sirat al Mustaqim. And Hassan al Basri said, The Prophet is Sirat al Mustaqim. Hidayah, Kaf, Haya, Kaf, Haya, Ya, Ta'yeed. Allah is the, he is the one who gave you, who aided you with his victory. Ta'yeed, support. Ya, Ain. Wallahu ya'asimuka min al nas. Isma. And Allah protected you from people. Sa'ad, Salawat. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our Prophet. Qadiyad says one of the greatest, the, the, the epitome of honor of the Prophet ﷺ in the Qur'an, swear, that Allah swears by the blessed life of the Prophet يعمهون, By your life, by the life of the Prophet ﷺ, the blessed sirah, the people who are astray are blind of heart in their stupor, in their ghafla, heedlessness. And so... The Kana Khulukuha al Quran. He was the manifestation, the perfect mirror of the Quran in the world. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Ta'ala revealed in Surah Al Qalam, Noon wal Qalami wa Maya Starun. That the, uh, Abdullah, Shaykh Abdullah Sirajuddin says that this has to do with the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wa inna ka bi ni'mati rabbika. Ma anta bi ni'matika. Bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. Wa inna ka la ala khulukin azim. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. Shaykh Abdullah Sirajuddin says, This is indicating the profound aql of the Prophet. His supreme intellect. Nothing of junoon touched him. Not even sha'iba, not even the slightest bit of lack, because junoon is lack of intellect. And Shaykh Abdullah Sirajuddin cites Wahhab ibn Munabbid, the great tabi imam, who says, I read 71 scriptures of the previous traditions and in all of them they say that the, that the aql, the supreme intellect uh, uh, of the Prophet ﷺ is such that if all of creation from the beginning of time till the end of the dunya, if all those uqul are gathered, it's like a one grain of sand compared to all the sand in the world. That's the Prophet's aql This is Wahhab ibn Munabbid, tabi imam. And, and so then, and then the unending reward وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And verily you are in a vast ethos of character. And reflect on this verse. Allah Ta'ala could have said any of the wonders of the Prophet Wasallam. Allah Ta'ala could have said, you are the first thing I created. And that would have been true and beautiful. Allah Ta'ala could have said, you are my primordial light that I created. Allah Ta'ala could have said, you are the one that will intercede on the Day of Judgment. Allah Ta'ala could have highlighted so many of the unique virtues of the Prophet Wasallam. What does he highlight? It's the most salient reality that we can benefit from directly in terms of practical change. Beautiful character. Beautiful character. And so again, this is what this night is about. It doesn't end with the beautiful singing. It begins with the singing such that that singing resonates in our hearts such that we are in, 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 inspired to do something for the sake of Allah, even if it's a little thing tonight. To make that intention and, and a genuine intention. Qadama Sid is related to Sid. We have to have sidq as well, genuine authenticity and honesty with our Lord. That Ibn Atta'ila says, Thalathatun min akhlaq al awliya. There are three salient virtues of the people Allah loves the awliya, salamatu sadr, wa sakhawatu nafs, wa husna dhanbi ibadullah. To have 
uh, 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 generosity of soul like our Prophet had his soul encompassed the whole cosmos look at the, how he bound the hearts of a people, peoples that, were, that knew nothing but violence the tribal warfare of Arabia the uh, Aus and the Khazraj they had the battle of Bu'ath they were fighting each other now they're brothers through the Prophet Muhajirin Ansar different tribes, different cities he makes Mu'akha, binds their hearts he sallallahu alayhi wa the, the rich and the poor, the enfranchised, the disenfranchised, the wealthy and the slaves, binding their hearts, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Arab and the non-Arab, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Jami'ah, tonight one of the themes is the unifying prophet. He's Jami'ah. Everywhere he went, he was trying to make peace treaties. In the early Ghazawat, one of the first Ghazawat of Waddan, on the way, the, one of the first early battles, he makes peace treaty, Bani Dumra. On one of the, Bani, uh, the Ghazawat al Shayra. On his way home, he makes peace treaty, Bani Mudrij. He's always making peace treaty, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Ghazawat are rooted in the effort to make peace in a, in a sea of raging war. He, the Medina is an oasis of peace in a sea of raging war. All the jihad of the, of the Sira is understood in this context. And so he is unifying at every level, Sahawat al Nafs, another salient virtue of the awliya, wa salamat al Sadr, to not hold any grudges. To not hold any grudges. This is the, 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 the people of Jannah, they go to bed without grudges in their heart. To just let go for the sake of Allah, no envy, no rancor, no hatred. We've been hurt by other people. Everyone in this room has been hurt by someone. But we don't, if, if we can't let go for our own egos, let go for the sake of Allah and the Messenger Wasallam, Connecting ourselves with Him, because something of that light will then come in our lives. And we'll, the sweetness will outweigh the bitterness. And this is how the Sahaba handled Musiba. When they had the worst trials, they went to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Ansari woman at Uhud, they told her, she came to the battle afterwards. They said, your father has been martyred. Your father was killed. She says, how is the messenger? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They say, your brother was martyred. How is the messenger? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They say, your husband was martyred. How is the messenger? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They say, he's fine. He's good. She says, show me so I can see. I'm still not satisfied. And they take her and let her see. She's looking at the Prophet and gazing. She says, Kullu musibatin ba'daka jalan. Every calamity, every pain, every difficulty after you, as long as you're okay, is easy, is bearable. Through Him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whatever difficulties we're facing in our lives, whatever difficulty the Ummah is facing, we should say this. It should resonate in our, on our tongues, on our heart. Kullu musibatin ba'daka jalan. Because our Prophet is just fine, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Prophet is just fine, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why Sayyidina Talha was a human shield on that day to make sure that the Prophet is just fine. Took 80 wounds on his back to make sure the Prophet is just fine. Sallallahu When Zayd ibn Duthunna was captured and he was being tortured and they said, would you rather have Muhammad in your place and you're comfortable with your family? He says, I wouldn't want Muhammad to have a thorn, be picked by a thorn while I'm comfortable with my family. Kullu musibatin ba'daka jalal. The Prophet is just fine. He's better than fine. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, whatever pain we're going through. And so the, 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 the reality of him and what he has bestowed through this teaching is love, mahabba. And this is, this is really at the heart of a night like tonight, is recognizing the centrality of love in our faith. All of the different groups in the ummah, alhamdulillah, we have love for everyone. We disagree intellectually with ideas that are incorrect, but it doesn't descend to the heart. The difference in the mind never descends in the heart because we love. This is what the, the basis of, our, of, of, the, of the relationship of Muslims, mahabba. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsihi. None of you have perfected faith. None of you have the beauty of faith. The Muhammadan faith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until he loves for his brother everything that he loves for himself. So the basis of our relationship, Sunni, Shia, Salafi, Sufi, the whole nine, Ashari, Maturidi, Mu'tazari, everyone, the basis is love. That's it, full stop. Then we engage in a dialectic. And we reason, to, we discuss, okay, here's what I think, and there's a place for that. And there's errors, and errors have to be corrected. But even the errors in our ummah are a mercy from Allah. Even the mistaken, all the sects, over 100 sects in our history, the vast majority of them are still within Islam. And even they are, there's a hikmah in wrong ideas, even in theology. Why? Because there's going to be people that that's the only way they'll hold on to faith. And I would rather have someone have a wrong idea about the tradition, but it keeps them within Islam because some 
scholar made that mistake, or some sect made that mistake. So they stay Muslim, instead of that, if, it were, if only the right ideas were preserved, then all those people would leave the religion. Everything is a mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rahmati wasi'at kulla shay. Rahmati wasi'at kulla shay in this ummah. But we have to have love. Love is the foundation of, of all of our relationships. Al-mutahabbina bi. Wajibat mahabbati bil mutahabbina bi. My love is incumbent for those that love one another for my sake. Through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the reality. Our relationship with Allah is predicated on love. And the lengthy hadith of the nawafil, that Allah Ta'ala, the person draws nearer to Allah until hatta uhibba, fa'idha ahbabtuhu. So walaya is love. The whole religion, our relationship with Allah, love. Our relationship with one another, love. And this is how the greatest of our teachers understood our faith. And we'll conclude with one of the, uh, this principle manifested in one of the perennial questions that people get confused with. Sheikh Abdul Rahman Shahuri, rahimahullah, one of the great scholars and mystics of the last century, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was asked once, why did Allah create this world? This is one of the, this perplexes philosophers. They'll, they'll debate till kingdom come. Why, why, why? Why did God create this? Many Muslims say, why did God, why did Allah create everything? And when he was asked, he said, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, for mahabba out of love. That's the secret of the whole thing, out of love. And Allahu Alam, we could comment that that could be rephrases for, the, for Muhammad Because he is that love. He is that pure love. He's the one that Allah loves the most and he's the one that taught love and he's the one that manifests love and the whole thing from beginning to end is because of love. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people of mercy, love, prophetic virtue, akhlaq of the Prophet We ask Allah Ta'ala to make our hearts mirrors of Allah's light and the prophetic light and the light of the awliya. We ask Allah Ta'ala to make us people whose outward and inward is oriented to the good pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the good pleasure of our blessed Prophet and the, and, the, and, the, and the happiness of the people of Allah the ulama and the awliya, we ask Allah Ta'ala to resurrect us with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah to bring us into the scope of the beautiful hadith, Al-Mar'u Ma'aman Ahab, a person will be with the one that he loves. And based on the barakah of that hadith that we are with, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the great ulama and awliya of this tradition in this life and the next, Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.